video we're going to show you how to take your carcass parts and export them into DXF file where you can then um, import them into the CNC tool pathing program of your choice and uh, do the tool pathing that you need to cut the parts out on a CNC. So you can see we've got a finished design here freshly drawn and I've also created a scene that just exposes our carcass parts and that is just the base box and upper boxes layers that are turned on. If we look at our parts here we can see we've got selective drilling turned on so that we only get holes where we need for our drawer slides, our hinge plate holes, our, our uh, shelf pin holes, and we get some connector holes up here that we can use to connect the two cabinets together. We get construction holes out here that go all the way through um, that we can use for our conformat screws if we want. So these we call system holes here. They don't go all the way through. Same with the, for the drawer slides, but the construction holes go all the way through and our connector holes go all the way through. So we uh, have our, all of our parts here and what we can do is we can highlight them and we can go uh, up to the file menu, cutlass bridge and export to DXF. Oh, but we get an error. It says cutlass has not been produced. It contains the component um, C1, LB1, right end opening. <clears throat> What's going on here is if we open the, we select a part here and open the extended entity window, info window, you see there's no component number. We have not assigned part numbers to all of these uh, cabinets. So the first thing we need to do is go up here and once we're done with the design, we want to say renumber all cabinets. And uh, it's complaining about this part right here. And uh, that was a part that I copied in from another design and I didn't properly get it set up. So uh, let's exclude that for the moment. And well, actually, uh, we probably already have our uh, numbers. Yep. So it just didn't renumber that part, but everything else um, is numbered now. And it's telling us that we also have to create a cut list um, prior to uh, doing any export of DXF. So I'm highlighted everything again. I just basically did a edit, select all. I'm going to leave this guy out for now. And um, we're going to export, uh, we'll just export to Excel for now. That gave us a file. So now while everything is still uh, highlighted, I can go back now and do uh, Cutlass Bridge Export to DXF. And it says, completed successfully, all files have been put into the folder um, where my file resides. So if I go find that folder, and uh, go down here, I should have a file that's the same name. It's actually a folder. So you get a folder with the same name as your file. And in there are three different files in this particular case. So since I've got some plain old maple plywood in the, in the uh, in the design, I get uh, my three-quarter inch uh, maple plywood DXF. I get a three-quarter inch maple plywood pre-finished DXF and a half inch uh, maple plywood pre-finished. So each different material and thickness of each different material gets its own file because we can't obviously um, tool path the parts for different thickness materials because um, we have to uh, do different tool pathing for the the different thickness. 
So those are my DXFs, so I can take a look at those. So we can use any file or any program we want to look at this DXF. You could use AutoCAD to look at it raw. Um, the other thing we could do is just pull it straight into our CNC program, which or our tool pathing program, which I will do uh, right now. So I use uh, Vectric uh, Cut 2D Pro. It's a, it's a very reasonably priced program that can um, do your tool pathing for you. And it's just, uh, as the name says, it's for 2D uh, cutting, which is all we need for cabinets. So uh, if I go back into this file here and create a new file, and I'm going to give it, uh, make it 96.5 inches by 48.5 inches, which is typical for our, our uh, pre-finished maple plywood. And we'll do the three quarter inch first and the date and position down here. So now I can read in, import my vectors from a file. So I'm going to go up here and go uh, into our folder. Here we have up here my kitchen. And there is our three quarter inch maple plywood pre finished. And again, I'm going to open that. And what we can see is we get all of our parts just in a line. And if we zoom in on any given one of them, we can see. So they're all selected right now, so I'm just going to unselect. We can see we have a variety of parts that have our selected holes in them. There's a, there's a side with uh, drawers in it, so we can see our drawer slide holes. We've got, um, if we look at our layers here, um, we have some standard layers here that we can use. So all of our parts, the outlines, are on the parts large layer, unless they are smaller parts like uh, these stretchers those are on a part small layer because oftentimes you don't want to cut all the way through on small parts you want to uh, leave a little bit of a skin they call it an onion skin so we conveniently put the small parts on a separate layer if we go very quickly back to SketchUp and if we look at our settings. Here's the setting for that. CNC small part uh, in uh, square inches. So any part below 100 square inches will be put on the small parts layer in the DXF, which makes it convenient for you to uh, fine tune which parts uh, work best for your machine um, that need onion skinning. So you can kind of play with that that value. Um, if we go back and look at this again, we can see that we've got a couple more layers. We've got construction holes, which is basically any holes that go all the way through. That would be uh, our uh, either our construction holes or the connector holes. And then the last one is the system hole layer, which you can see are those holes. So those are the standard layers for now. Um, later, when we get uh, dado construction, there'll be separate layers for, for the dados and the, the tongues and so on. But for now, um, that's what you get. Here's, here's a part that's got um, some connector holes in it as well, and they will be on the construction hole layer because they go all the way through. So there are five millimeter holes in this case um, that, uh, go all the way through so they need their own layer because they need their own tool path and um, the uh, system holes get their own tool path the uh, large parts outline gets its own and the small parts outline gets its own as well 
All right, so now uh, what I can do is, and all programs are different, but for this program, what I can do is select all, edit, oops. Try that again. Um, I did Command A, which uh, allows me to select all the parts. And uh, I'm going to say uh, Nest Selected Objects. And it's asking me my tool diameter and the clearance and border gap and so on. So uh, I'm going to just accept those because they're set up for the way I want. I'm going to allow uh, rotate parts to find best fit, but I'm only going to allow uh, rotation of 180 degrees. I don't want it going 90 degrees because that will, my grain direction won't be correct. The way these come in is the grain direction is along this axis um, for the parts from cab writer. So I don't want to change 90 degrees unless I was using melamine or something like that. But since this has grain, I just want to go 180. I can preview this and it's thinking. And here we go. We end up with nine sheets uh, with all of our parts on there. And you can see we've even got labels. They came from Cab Rider um, with our part number and a description on there. And let's say, okay, here, if I look, we also have a labels layer that can be turned on and off. What these are is, is labels that's, that originally had stretched out past the edge of the part. So there are some random letters that just got grouped together. And now we can do all of our tool pathing, which you know, again varies amongst programs. Um, what's super convenient with the vector the vector products are you can um, assign tool path and associate it with a layer name. So if the layer and then save that as a template. So if the layer name always stays the same. You can save these templates off, and then I don't have to do any work if I'm pulling in um, parts that have the same geometry and tool paths as I've used in the past, which for cabinets like this um, is pretty much always the same. So they have these concepts of, um, of gadgets, and I can apply a template to all sheets. Um, so I don't have to do it sheet by sheet by sheet, which gets a little bit um, tedious. So if so let's say we were going for a shop bot, and I have this template that I've pre-set up, and um, I can output this to um, a different folder if I want. And why don't we go, let's create a folder. I'm just going to create a folder right in this folder called Tool paths. Back here, I'm going to go up here in under our cab writer folder, video demos uh, into my kitchen, and select tool paths. And that is our output folder. And I say OK. Warning me that I'm going to be cutting a little bit through on my drill holes, and I that's on purpose, so that's okay. I'm going to say okay for each sheet. You'll notice over there on the right, we just created all of our tool paths, and it's telling me that everything was okay, everything was okay, and here we had a failure on sheet four with the perimeter small parts, and that's because there were, were no small parts on that sheet, so that's okay. And everything was good. And if we go and look in this file, we've got nine sheets worth of tool paths that we can bring to our shop bot and we can cut out these parts. Um, if you want more um, information on how to do all the tool paths and so on for vector products, they have a ton of great videos on their website. So this is about a $500 product. Uh, which is very inexpensive. You know, they don't support every CNC in the world, but they support many, many of the common ones. So it's a great uh, companion tool to Cab Rider that doesn't cost you 
much and you can get some pretty sophisticated um, and quick, as you saw, we took a design from finished to uh, ready to cut in you know 10 minutes or so. So uh, the end-to-end -end, um, efficiency of a cab rider combined with your uh, tool pathing uh, product of choice uh, gets you uh, cutting pretty quickly. Thank you and uh, have fun with this.